Hey guys, Lucky13 here with War Creek Airsoft. Today we're going to be doing a review that I mentioned that I would do in one of the previous videos I made. Um, so basically this is the SCAR Echo 1. Let me zoom out here a little bit on my phone because I'm so low tech. It's awesome. Anyway, it's 1080p, so it's, that's one thing that's cool about this phone. So anyway, uh, this is the SCAR Echo 1 um, replica of the SCAR Heavy which is a 7.62. Now they, for kicks and giggles, um, they put in there six millimeter, of course. That's the BB size of an uh, airsoft gun. I like to call them airsoft rifles because it sounds more appropriate. People call them airsoft guns. I don't know why. I, to me, a pistol is a gun. This is a rifle. Um, of course, it's not. The, the reason most people call rifles rifles because the barrel's rifled, which has a twist to it. This, obviously, you know, just a straight pipe, but whatever. Uh, aside from all the history lessons, um, to this particular gun, I paid $150 on Evike. Uh, it was on sale at the time, and I think it's on sale right now uh, to this uh, day, which is uh, April 2nd. So um, I don't know how long it's going to be on sale. You know, it's just I know it's on sale now, so that's that's cool, fine and dandy. Uh, like I said, I've done three. Um, modifications to this rifle uh, first one I changed the um, the uh, bolt uh, handle it was on the right side and is now on the left side uh, basically I had to <clears throat> pull this pin right here as you can see and it drops the whole lower lower half of this weapon uh, the pistol mag and it's oddly shaped <laughs> Uh, the pistol, the pistol grip. What did I say? Pistol mag. The pistol grip, the magazine well, and your uh, selector fire, uh, and with your bolt release and all that stuff, it all falls apart as you uh, pull this pin right here. So when you pull this pin, like so, it's I pulled it out. Um, oh, if it comes all the way. Out. I think it does. It's a bit of a pain to get back. Okay, there it is. So it, it pulls out to that point, and you can see that it's just kind of dancing there in the circle. But uh, basically, at that point, it is loose. Ah, that's not working. Okay. So basically, it's loose. You kind of pull forward and drop down. Anyway, uh, so basically, you just pull down and out and it falls out so I mean, that's, that's basically it and you roll over and you can see your hop up stuff uh, all of your, your uh, chamber and everything I mean, that's basically it and here I mean this is essentially uh, just your lower receiver as you would have on your regular weapon uh, let's see oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm just looking at some stuff, you know, trying to get an idea. Because the Tokyo Marui version of the Scar Heavy, <clears throat> I think it's a Scar Heavy, it might be a Scar Light. Anyway, the bolt, as you fire the, the mechanism on the trigger here, ugh, my finger, as you fire this, the bolt actually moves with each shot. And I was just trying to figure out, is there some kind of thing that I can add to mine to get it to pull this back as it fires? Now there may be. I'm gonna look into that. Uh, if I do find anything, I will post a video on that um, or make some modifications. But anyway, so the three the three things I changed was the bolt, the hop up uh, nub, which is located in here, and the wiring for your uh, battery compartment, which was in the butt stock. So you popped up this little. Also, it's it's a similar to the uh, lower. It's the same thing, but this one, uh, the more you pull it out, the weaker your uh, polymer plastic here becomes, and it eventually just becomes really loose. Um, one extra thing to notice is your your uh, rubber uh, butt butt stock, the end of it. If you try to put this on upside down, it won't fit properly. Um, so it's going to look really weird like you can see the holes kind of lined up But not really and you notice there's a lot of extra rubber that doesn't fit in the right spots So one tip for me to you is to put an arrow on the inside of your uh, Butt stock I, I used a uh, golden sharpie 
uh, to do that. So it's, it's a fast assembly. So you just look at it and just slam it on there. You know, you're done, good, great, whatever. Um, the second, or the third thing, on to the third thing, not the second. The third modification I did to this was, uh, in there, is I changed the wiring. Now, people may look at it and be like, oh god, I'm terrified of wiring, you know, it's, it's all this, all that. It's actually not that bad. Uh, as you can see, you got two little uh, dots there. One's for your positive, one's for your negative. Uh, and I did, I, I thought there was something inside there, but there's not. You actually have to take a, uh, I took a, a really small four-way screwdriver and uh, pecked this pin out. Now in the middle here, between these two little metal um, pieces, there's actually a plastic. It's a plastic pin that fits in between the two metal pins. Um, let's see, where did I take it from the top? I can't remember if I took it from the top and knocked it out or from the bottom. Whichever way, I'm, I'm sure it'll work just fine. Either way, um, I may have taken mine from the top. But anyway, as you notice, there's no wiring inside here that's attached to the rest of this. That's because it all ends right here at these two little uh, spots. I'm not really sure what the proper name is for it, so I'm just going to leave that out. Uh, but this is positive and negative and it runs to these wires here so this is all soldered together you have to disassemble this hinge pull all this out remember which one of these are which because if you pull the wrong wire out and it's you, you wire it up backwards it could have some really bad effects uh, to happen so just keep in mind like maybe draw on it with a magic marker or something like a plus or a negative or something like that to uh, keep in mind which is which uh, but basically I ran a solid wire all the way to here, um, which goes into the uh, fuse fuse box. Now, the reason why this is separated, uh, why I had to I had to resolder this. Now, this this particular wire from my thumb to my index finger was the original wiring that came with the uh, weapon, and I just didn't like I didn't care for the fuse the fusing. Fusing the fuse uh, holder and such because it was a square. Uh, let me see if I can locate that real fast. I got most of the stuff still. I just had it put up in my assault bag. Uh, nope. Okay. Yeah, that sucks. Anyway, um, yeah. Basically, it came with a square car fuse. Um, this one's a little more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Slender, I guess you'd say. And it would fit back inside here a little easier. Now, however, if you can look down inside there, there probably is just enough room for your battery pack. Now, if you look way down here, right below my fingernail, I actually disassembled this whole butt stock. And I took some hot glue. And there's a valley down in here, a crevice at the very bottom and then back. And I measured my battery and I noticed that it would fit. It would fit perfectly. So I didn't want my battery to slide all the way through there and, you know, get loose or whatever. So I put some uh, hot glue down in there, which is, you can perfectly take it, you know, take it off, take it apart, rip it out, whatever you're going to do. Um, <clears throat> but it holds the battery pack in place. It keeps it from wobbling around and shaking. Uh, so, I mean, it, it helps a little bit. And now, with these two points right here on the back, that's what attaches to your, uh, your gearbox and stuff. I mean, this is where your battery is powered through. So basically, it's snugged up against it just like that inside your gun. So, I mean, or your weapon. So, let me say your gun. Shoot. Anyway, uh, there's only one thing I've really found out that I don't much care about this weapon in particular is the uh, is actually the buttstock. It's a little loose when you go to close it, and it, it wobbles a little bit back and forth because they made the hole too big on the inside of this. Um, if you look right here, there's actually a crevice along this line. There it is. It's a crevice. It's a little too wide. And when this catches right here, there's a little notch that's cut out. It's like a tongue and groove. And this would be the tongue and this would be the groove. But when this tongue catches this groove, this groove it's too wide for this tongue to fit, so there's a little bit of play in there, and it's kind of aggravating. And I've often uh, entertained the idea of putting a little hot glue in there, closing it, or letting it dry a little bit, and then closing it. That way it would be a little more solid of a fit. Now, 
like I said, this gun call or weapon costs $150 on Evi because originally $200 some dollars. I don't know, they got a mark down or some crap. Uh, but for a new guy to modify, to be able to take it apart and identify certain things of a weapon, it's fairly easy for me uh, because I was in the military, so I know how to break down weapons automatically. Look, this is a lower pin for your lower receiver, and this is your upper receiver, which has no pins because it's built that way. It's, I mean, this is an airsoft rifle, but. I haven't really had my hands on a SCAR heavy uh, in real life, so I mean, it may have an upper receiver pin and a lower receiver pin, but this has only got one lower receiver pin, whereas an M16 has two, one in the front, like this one, and then has another one in the back, which obviously may fit here, I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if a SCAR heavy has one or not, so, um, quick breakdown, so, it does come with this metal uh, flash hider in the box when you buy it, You, it comes with this on it. So it's pre-installed and they had to, I think they had to sell it with the orange tip installed when it goes out to ship. Um, let's see what else. Uh, don't buy junk BBs because they can uh, break inside your gearbox here. Uh, when they are loaded out, they can bust and go through your hopper and just mess everything up. So you want to keep away from that. And make sure you keep everything oiled and greased up with you know the proper lubricants let's see i think that's about it guys um if you plan on taking the barrel out you have to take out these two screws here on the bottom of your picking any rail uh, there's two on the side here i don't think these have to come all the way out they do have like little springs or something attached to them here so once you back them out so far you'll see it and this one screw actually holds the picking any rail to the the body of the weapon so all is well uh, you may or may not. Let me see. I don't know. Yeah, I think you gotta take this screw out here and this screw out here. Possibly. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've taken it apart. I don't really need to take it apart for anything at this point. I just wanted to break it down to show you guys what it looks like broke down. Um, that's that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, go to the front front sights, the rear sights. There's no attachments that comes with uh, other than just the metal metal flash hider. Alright guys, if uh, you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that sub button. I'm going to be bringing some more videos. i got some more stuff coming in the mail, hopefully pretty soon. So I'll be unboxing that as well. And I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together. Off camera, of course, because it's really hard to film. And uh, use one hand to put stuff together. So, in a real nice life, that would be awesome if I could do everything one-handed. But I cannot, so. Alright guys, remember, uh, hit that sub button. Like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff. And uh, keep it real in the game world, guys.